thank you for introducing me. Um, the project movement here in Stuttgart has been one has many facets and dimensions. At its best, political emancipatory and emancipatory ones. The protest movement against the railway and housing project Stuttgart 21 in Germany is considered to be an exception in German history protests, especially in terms of um, the wrong, long running character. It is now considered to be one of the longest ongoing protests in Germany. But first of all, uh, let me thank the Heinrich Böll Foundation, namely uh, Nino, Taco, and uh, Tamuna, uh, for giving me the chance to share my experience with you and learn about other examples and problem solving. Thanks to the Goethe Foundation for uh, having us today in this uh, wonderful presentation and we've been having a beautiful coffee, very served tea, and uh, I already enjoyed it. Thank you all. And uh, last but least, all of uh, you here in the audience who are curious uh, about uh, what we're talking about. Um, I don't want to start with a down. I don't want to let you down. But um, despite the fact that we had the most creative, peaceful, enduring protest leading to the end of an almost God given 60 years of Conservative Party rule, Despite the fact having a green government, and despite the fact we plan to be highly sophisticated with participation, our protest has made no progress at all whatsoever to stop the project, uh, to the project of Stuttgart 21. And uh, we had some of, of that examples uh, yesterday, as John was saying about uh, the Taxi Square and uh, so on and so forth. So, we do have things in common. So I consider ourselves more or less in the same boat and in the same struggles. And as we already concluded yesterday, we seem to struggle the same problems. No matter if at the core of capitalism or post-communist or whatever. Uh, so I, I would assume we uh, suffer all from structural defects of capitalism. It's just on different levels, as we uh, were discussing yesterday. All the same with another conclusion of yesterday, it's all about investment-driven urbanism. The good side. The good side is we have learned a lot in Stuttgart and elsewhere. And let me tell you one thing. Um, protests are enacted with Patrick, who's sitting here right now, and uh, got a job as a government. Uh, say my own private life, I'm uh, in public administration. Uh, first in the Ministry of Transport and uh, Infrastructure in Baden-Württemberg. And uh, now temporarily trying to teach participation to future leaders of the state of Baden-Württemberg. And this whole leadership can be tools I have in Baden-Württemberg. But right today I want to speak to you as an activist. Um, who made quite some experiences in the last seven years. And I've already learned things during this conference. Uh, and I'm curious to hear about more about your experiences and so on. Um, as the fine examples we have shown yesterday, I found myself with the same challenge. Uh, how do we do this thing in like 15 minutes? So, uh, I'll try to keep short and leave you with some fragments. And uh, at some stage, uh, this is an invitation later on to ask and uh, hopefully we can do discussions. And by the way, um, this is another activist shirt. Yesterday we mentioned the waterfront project, and since I lived in Belgrade um, for some while, I have friends in Belgrade. And this is called Lida Minimo Biograd, um, which is um, uh, we don't let Belgrade drown. It's also about uh, an investment, an investment project on Belgrade Park for waterfront of the area where the sun runs into the venue. But that's another story. And uh, I'll leave you with another positive uh, thing. Um, as I went out to the hotel yesterday, uh, I met the future of TBC reclaiming the streets. Uh, some of you might say this is uh, too busy, and I saw so this little kid with uh, this urban space thing on his jacket. So, um, we go on. 
And who, who of you has uh, heard about the Stuttgart 21 protests in the last couple of years? Is some of, some of you familiar? Yes, no, no, okay, good. So, um, I will just briefly um, give you an idea about uh, what's going on, um, about the project, about the protest, about the practice, and more about the lessons learned. So, I'll we'll just to trigger some points. The project, Stuttgart 21, um, German Railway, Deutsche Bahn, is planning to transform the Stuttgart Terminus Railway Station, so it's a terminus where it can stop actually, with 16 rails into an underground, through going train station with only 8 rails. German Railway has sold the track system for off ground to the city of Stuttgart, which intends to create a surface, a new urban housing and business area. And we all know what that means. The project history goes back to the 80s, where neoliberal conservative forces in government had the idea about changing the state of German railway into a joint stock company. Therefore, they identified cities with terminal railway stations and came up with plans to study the surface uh, and moving the railway station on the ground. Plans were denied by every single city except Stuttgart. Planning started in 1994 at the time, uh, and at this time, uh, at no costs at all for a uh, public budget, since the driving forces announced that uh, the project is financially self contained. Just by selling property um, to develop uh, into shopping malls and businesses. As you can see on the chart, that was very wishful thinking. With the signing of the so-called Memorandum of Understanding, the project must reach already 2.8 billion euros. One crucial point of every project is the structure. And to me, um, most of the contracts and most of the contracts and exhibits I'm working with, um, we think that Stuttgart 21 is a public-private option. And you might get an idea while there are currently massive demonstrations in all uh, European capitals against free trade uh, agreements with Canada and the United States. They will further ease public-private partnerships and hybrid contracts, hybrid forms of contracts, with no proper national laws and private mediation courts instead. The crucial number of one-fifth of the Stuttgart population on the streets and daily demonstrations forced the conservative government to start the first step to break down our systems. The so-called fact check, fact and check, made a minimum of 4.5 billion uh, costs transparent. And by September 2016, this year, the German Federal Court of Auditions handed a final report to the cost of the project to the National German National Assembly and the cost reached now 10 billion euros. Reaction of German railway government and responsible elements zero. So the protest. Protest against the project goes as far back as the first plan itself, and even led to the foundation of a new party. Uh, initially voted to the Stuttgart Town Assembly, the party was against the project. A party which, which was based merely on the opposition of the project. The first so-called Montags Demo, Monday demonstration, which became the central manifestation of the protest, began in October 2009, as with only four participants. One of them was me um, trying to build up the stage with a healthy night. The demos were kept simple, and the form has not changed. Simple and not changed. Always 6.30 p.m., always one stage, mostly at the same space, Depending on the rules of local authorities, we all know that. One moderation, a few speakers with reports on the last uh, news about the project and the protest, uh, sometimes followed by a march or uh, some musicians or a band. Uh, we had several bands uh, proposing the project so, uh, and the like. As you can see on the chart, uh, the protest is massively progressing. So, um, 
Here you can see an example of the Stuttgart railway station, the so-called Nordflügel, North, the northern wing of the train station. And uh, after demolishing the so-called northern wing, in July 2010, protests intensified, both in quality and in quantity. Uh, I will give you some examples of the quality and the quantity. So we had a steady live stream of those deconstructions. Uh, which led to the internet based news channels, Flügel TV, it's called Wing TV because this is one of the wings, and uh, CANS 21. So, two news channels on the internet, nearly about the project, like 24 hour live stream on the internet about what was going on. Um, two grassroots based magazines, two magazines, um, one's called Context, and uh, the other is called uh, 21. Uh, we had massive steady blockades of the deconstruction side. We had creative forms of action. It's a protest manifestation uh, on, the, on, the, on the fence, you can see here. And the fence now is in the Baden Württemberg uh, Museum of History. Um, yeah. we, had a special, uh, we had special demonstration uh, for young children. We had special demonstration uh, for kindergarten. So we had kindergarten people um, sort of cruising around. We had park gatherings, uh, with self-organized professionally guided tours about the flora and fauna with special focus on the trees and uh, endangered species in the park. We had self-organized special trainings for peaceful blockades and we had self-organized anti-aggression training. So, kind of everything uh, for everybody. So the turning point, the so-called Schwarzer Donnerstag or the Black Thursday, uh, September 13, 2010. The Black Thursday was the ultimate turning point both in protest and for the project. And eventually the starting point for nationwide rethinking planning processes and mega projects of mega projects and beyond. On this day, police came, nation, came uh, with a nationwide uh, available forces of hardware and uh, in, in manpower. Believe it or not, um, not a single stone was thrown at the police. Protests remained passive and peacefully. Um, though you can see a bit of another scene on the pictures. Uh, that day, uh, Mr. Wagner, you can see the man on the picture, uh, lost his ability to see. More than 30 other peaceful people were still suffering from permanent eye dysfunction. More than 500 protesters were massively injured and had to see a doctor. Most of the 25 to 30,000 people in the park still suffer various forms of post traumatic disorder entering the park, seeing pictures, films, or whatever happened. Even I couldn't go to the scene like for some two years because it really, really affected me. Um, so, that's what we the milestones of participation. As you've seen on chart number five, just hours after the most imaginable presence of police brutality, on October 1st, just one day after, Stuttgart has seen its biggest demonstration after World War II. 150,000 people on the streets. There was not a single policeman. We just sort of guarded ourselves and went peacefully through the city. The whole city was in shock. There was no police around. They all had to go to Berlin, or the high rank police officials had to go to Berlin to report to the Chancellor Merkel. And ever since she declared that project of national interest. We know what that means if the head of state declares a project as a project of national interest. We could have stopped at that point, but we didn't. The critical number of people on the streets, very important, the critical number of people on the streets, and the worldwide echo in the media forced the conservative government to act. Here you may see a new term, participatement. It goes back to a publication of the sociologist and urban planner Klaus Zell in 2011. It's all about the fact uh, that the government tries to entertain people rather than actively involve them. As you can see on the fall, first came the fact check, then came the elections with the green, red, like with the green socialist democratic revolution. We had a so called stress test, I was a member of, and uh, we had so called referendum which was rather a political instrument to make this uh, coalition of um, people against uh, the project and people for the project working. So, what have we learned? The good practice is first, structure and network. 
Um, during our protest, we formed some 50 special interest groups. Among them were the group I co-founded, the Juristen zu Stuttgart 21, so it's uh, judges, lawyers, solicitors, sort of everybody against the project. And I can see Jan in the audience, who is also a solicitor. Hello, Jan. And uh, we had engineers against the project, we had architects against the project, planners against the project. We even had Catholic priests against the project. So, <laughs> the protest was heavily sophisticated. And yeah, that was very special. Second point, creativity. Yeah? And as I already mentioned, the protest was cool. So we had Kinderwagen being all we sort of had very brilliant ideas. And then um, we weren't throwing stones, though. Uh, some of you sometimes I felt like throwing stones. We had we had that thing and we were throwing maybe maybe you remember the uh, the shoe throw, throwing incident uh, some years ago in in an Arabic country. So what we did we began in front of uh, the the uh, government and we were all throwing our old shoes uh, beyond the fence and stuff like that. So we were trying to be creative in a way. Third point, broadest broadest possible consensus. Um, so protesters included all age groups, all classes, gender and educational groups. So there was uh, a lot of service going on. Like, like, I was, like there were some demonstrations. I was asked by three different university groups. Uh, everybody was sort of doing surveys. What was, what was this protest about? Is it just uh, communists or left groups or old people or young people? What is it about? So it was a very well uh, study. Um, then another point which I think was really um, good for us to have in um, special and regional forms of the protests. The region where I come from is uh, Schwaben and uh, you know every region they have their specialities. So uh, we invented a thing together with some actors that we did a so-called charge line, which is uh, every day at 7 p.m. like we were opening our windows and blowing the whistle out of the uh, window. And at some stage the whole thing was, you know, we just had to use uh, the noise protection to, to walk through the streets and so on and so forth. Well, so we tried to engage some cultural forms of protests in our protests. Um, on this chart you, you can see it and uh, just as you can see, also some of our people went uh, to Gezi to join the protest there. Uh, we have earrings and there you can see the so-called charge line on the, on the big chart on the top and people blowing the whistle. And another very interesting thing is um, the one on the bottom is a, is a sort of self-contained um, Bürger informieren Bürger. So it's uh, people are informing people. So it's not state official, it's fully self-contained and it's been there ever since the protest started. Leads me to almost to the end, uh, to the lessons learned, and very big. And well, I have to say before, we are we are very bad, but we are at the very top notch of public, public participation. So it's, it's it, it almost we almost come to the point where the a participation industry. So this might be not really comparable, but it gives you an idea an idea where this heavily sophisticated form of participation might lead to. Let me to the first point. Uh, invite them, never follow their invitation. This includes a whole mindset of cause and effect issues. Whoever invites you sets the agenda. Or in that case, uh, if they offer you anything, they won't do it without a plan or target. We, we know that, it's very simple. I mean, if you invite somebody to your house, you treat you, especially in Georgia, to do part of everything. And in that case, you have an agenda. And in the worst case, you have a hidden agenda. If you, are, if you are in participation business, uh, one has a plan, a so-called participation architecture, and this is what I'm doing, I am the ministry, I was the architect of the participation processes. And uh, I teach this, and I teach this in many, many hours, and to keep it short and simple, so the architecture of the participation process is like the core ring, where you have the project, say a bridge, or a wind turbine, or a road, or whatever you want to build, and then around this you have the issue of participation. So you have the actual project, you have the participation, and further along you have the communication. So be aware, there's an architecture behind that. If we look closer on the architecture of participation processes, the first step 
part of the project developers is to make a proper field survey. Field survey. Therefore, they need as much information as one can think about. It might look charming and tempting. Um, and temptation is high to follow some representatives' invitations. I mean, we invite you to the town hall like, as a protest to speak with us. Very tempting. Town hall, nice, uh, you know, tempting. Does the media echo uh, of refusing that per se a good offer uh, would be negative whatsoever? So if you invite you and you don't go there, it's not good. Therefore, it is necessary to use the activist people um, to set the agenda and therefore invite them. So they have the role of refusing talks. In the case of, of a top down participation architecture, um, talks are never harmless. So if you invite a top down, beware and, and think about it if you go or not. <laughs> um, it's never harmless. And we talked about 90% uh, of participation processes, 90% is top down. It's never like, you know, or hardly ever. Smiling faces. Second point is be transparent and united and never do anything with, uh, with feedback. This includes a, a, a time delay. You know, if they tell you something, if they have a government or create developers tell you something, take your time to report to your group. Take your time. It's, it's really an important fact. Yeah? And third point we make good experiences with is show massive public presence and go global. So we were trying to build a network uh, with uh, France, they had Notre Dame de Londres, which is a ridiculous um, project about the, an airport. In Italy, we were joining forces with uh, Mali Susa, another high speed railway thing, and in Romania with some um, ground digging. And we even, as I said, went to Germany and to support this protest in Gizi in Istanbul, Turkey. So it's a good idea to, to look uh, across your borders, as yesterday, borders and boundaries. It's a good way to go beyond the uh, internet. See what other people do, exchange, and just what we have the opportunity today. I'm very thankful to share my uh, experiences with you. So go global. And uh, last but not least, um, yeah, again, the customize your protest and make it irresistible. As we heard yesterday, um, you have to be cool. You have to be uh, Cool for like, like, you know, make it like creative and irresistible. And uh, last but not least, the green government, uh, green conservative government, uh, I call it an activist nightmare come true. <laughs> the case of Stuttgart 21 is one of the five, one of the first empirical verifications that nothing changes when it comes to the crunch. As I have shown you in the last 15, 15 minutes, and we had that yesterday in Germany. We call it the so-called uh, Marshall the Institutionen. Yeah. So we had that. You start as an activist, you might end up with government, and then things change. So um, as for me, allow me to show this portion. Luckily, I was old enough to resist. And if I always told the people I can go back to the market and sell vegetables, or if you want me, beware that everything you tell me might be blown out as soon as you tell me. So. Um, to speak at another level, there is government in two states in Germany which have a free conservative government coalition and to cut short here, as you can imagine, uh, here we don't set a foot on the ground with our issues whatsoever. There is no opposition left, and sad to say, left in a literal way. But lifted to a higher level even, it shows the Asian structure problem at its core. Thank you for your attention.